Good morning. We welcome you to the services of the Boonville Church of Christ. I know that we have some in the audience, some visitors, and a multitude of people who are joining us uh, digitally online. And we welcome you to our services this morning. You probably saw signs as you came in dealing with uh, special precautions because of uh, COVID-19. We have alternate pew seating to facilitate uh, individual spacing. Would you index my slide up there, please? We also have uh, individual communion cups with uh, the bread and the fruit of the vine in each one for the Lord's Supper. Uh, we ask that you please not shake hands I can tell that there's good spacing in the auditorium, and that certainly is safety precaution. There are tissues available on each pew, uh, and hand sanitizers and uh, no-touch dispensers in the lobby. And as we've been advising people, if, if people, if you or people in your family are sick, we encourage you to stay home. There are several... Uh, <clears throat> who are worshiping from home. If I could get you to go to that next slide. Uh, here are some important links for those. If you'll go to www.boonvillecoc.com slash give, there will be instructions on how you can continue to contribute to the Lord's work on that web page. If you have younger children uh, who are missing our Sunday school because we don't have that scheduled, there are, uh, there's information available at www.boonvillecoc.com slash class resources. I've been encouraged to share that if you will follow us on Facebook, uh, there will be member discussions and continuing updates. We are live streaming this morning. We'll also be live streaming a class. It's live streaming only. There's no attendance here at the building. Uh, for adult study in Malachi, this week we'll be in Malachi chapter 2. It is uh, our intent to keep worshiping and live streaming from the building on Sunday mornings as long as that is feasible. If you or your family choose to worship at home, there are disposable communion supplies available in the church annex as well as in the lobby and on the tables here on each side of the front of the auditorium. Uh, today's worship. If you'll notice your worship bulletin, if you picked up one when you came in, the song selection, the prayer topics, the scripture reading, and the message that Brother Stephen will be sharing were planned, and our prayer is that God will accept our worship. If you'll notice in the worship bulletin, we have the first song is How Great Thou Art, led by Brother Jordan Coates, followed by a prayer by Brother Bo Gross, acknowledging God's greatness. And then we'll be singing Count Your Many Blessings, followed by a prayer thanking God for His many blessings, led by Brother Guy Gardner. And then we'll be singing, Lord, we come before Thee now, followed by a prayer petitioning God to help us with our current needs, led by Brother Rick Warner. And then we'll focus on our singing, 
our God, He is alive in the scripture reading in Luke by Brother Ben Mooney, followed by the message by Brother Steve Hodgen, our invitation song, What Will You Do With Jesus, led by Brother Coates again, and then a song before the Lord's Supper, and then I'll coordinate our partaking of the Lord's Supper utilizing these disposable kits. And Brother Brandon Elliott will have our closing prayer. I am reminded that Paul wrote to Timothy for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I'm just really uh, overwhelmed at the love that this congregation is showing. Uh, I know that we serviced this month over a hundred families with um, boxes in the food pantry and about 40 children uh, with meals who would normally get free meals at, at uh, school. And that's certainly an indication of love. Um, and then that thing about the sound mind, uh, does this include protecting life when we can? Well, you'll remember in Acts 9 and verse 25 that the disciples in Damascus let Paul down in a basket to help him escape the Jews who had plotted to kill him. Also on two occasions, one in John 8 and verse 59 and one in John 10 and verse 39, Jesus escaped people who were trying to uh, impact his life. You know, uh, it is seems to be a biblical principle by example for us to use our sound mind or and especially when it is biblically based common sense to protect our lives so that we can have additional time to serve our Lord. There's some balancing that needs to be done here and I would encourage you to think about Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. There is no doubt that our God is an awesome God. Would you bow with me, please? Our loving Heavenly Father, we praise Thee, we glorify Thee, we pray that our worship to Thee would be pleasing in Your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. you're worshiping from home this morning, I'm going to try to hopefully lead these in a way that you can sing along with us from your homes. How great thou art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider
Gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly bow, bow before you this morning, recognizing your greatness, Father, recognizing how wonderful and awesome you are. Father, as we open our eyes this morning and see your beautiful creation, we see your greatness and we see your power and we see your strength and your might, Father. And we are at awe at these things, Father. For we, we understand that your greatness and your power can can change lives as it did in biblical times, Father. We realize it can also do in current situations and current times that we have today. We pray, Lord, that you would use your power to bless us, and to do the things that would make this situation go away, Father. We realize and, and recognize that you are in control and only you are in control, Father. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us, for using your greatness to bless us, and we we are eternally in your debt, Father, for your willingness to send your precious Son down, Lord. We've seen your greatness through him, and we, are, we recognize that our salvation is only through him. We thank you, Father, for everything you've done for us again. We recognize how great you are. We pray that you would please forgive us. In Christ's name. Next song, we count your blessings. When upon life's bills you are tempest off, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, take them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. 
blessings you've given us. We thank you for the blessings of life, allowing us to be here this morning. God, we thank you for the blessings of loved ones to lean on and to care for and to confide in. God, we thank you so much for the blessings of brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you for the wisdom of those that have come before us, that we've been able to learn from. God, we thank you so much for the blessings of children and the joy and happiness they bring into our lives. God, this morning we especially want to thank you for the blessings of our health care workers that you provided this nation, the blessings and the skill that you've given our doctors and our nurses to work around the clock to help us through this trying time. God, we thank you for the blessing of humility, the blessing of us just being sheep and having faith and following you, our good shepherd. We're so thankful for the blessing of a good shepherd. We know that you are in control Father, and we trust you and we love you. And God, we thank you this morning for the blessing of adversity because we know it is in times like this that we grow and become better and learn to overcome. And God, we thank you for the blessings of forgiveness and grace and mercy. And we just ask that you continue to watch over us and bless us, and know that we love you, Father, and we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we come before thee now. Lord, we come before thee now, at thy feet we come now. Oh, do not us to stay, shine. 
Let us pray. Oh, Holy Father, we humbly come before you, your presence this morning, Father. We are asking, Father, for thy help in this trying time that we're going through, this terrible sickness. Father, we know you are the great creator, and we know, Father, that you know all things, and you are in control, Father, of this. And we know, Father, that it's you and you only that can take care of this, Father. And we just pray, Father, that you will wrap your arms around this virus and just and squish, squish it, Father, and stop it in its tracks is what we pray for, Father. But we pray, Father, for your will to be done in all things, Father, because we don't, we're human and we don't know, Father, what you know. And we just pray, Father, that in accordance with thy will that you would stop this terrible virus. Father, we pray for those that are sick and are hurting. We know that there's many worldwide, Father, that's very, very sick, that's lost their lives, that's, that's battling this disease, Father. And we just pray that you would be with, with each one of them, Father. We pray for those that are tending to the ones that are sick, Father, the, the health care uh, givers. And we just pray, Father, that you would be with each one of those and, and protect them, Father. Give them the strength and the stamina, Father, to, to keep being able to take care of, of, of the sick, Father. We know that uh, it's, it's trying, very trying times for them, Father, and we just, they're sacrificing and their families are sacrificing, Father, and we just ask that you would, would be with each one of them. We pray for our world leaders, Father, that as they go through this, that you would you would help them, Father, and that they would look to thee, Father, for the wisdom on what to, what to do and, and how to lead in this trying time. We pray, Father, for those that are shut in, Father, that all the mental anguish that's going on because of this, Father, we just pray that, that people would look to thee, Father, to enter thy word for comfort and in a way to get through this stressful time, Father. We know you're the answer, and we just pray that you would help each one of them to look, look to thee. We pray, Father, for the church and for the leadership of the church, Father. Pray that you would, you would bless those that are uh, in a leadership uh, position. We, we pray especially, Father, for our, our elders, and our deacons, and that you would help, the, help them to lead in a way that would be in accordance with thy will, Father, because I know there's decisions that's, that have had to be made that was hard decisions, Father, and we just pray that you would strengthen each one of them and just build them up, Father, and, and help them to lean on thee, Father. And as members, Father, of the Lord's body, we just pray that we would look for opportunities to help those that father that are in need, and we and I know father that uh, we do that things are that we're doing things to to try to help in any way we can, and we just pray father that you would bless these opportunities and those that are laboring uh, in those opportunities. Father, we just ask that you would be with with each one of them. We pray father for our Elderly people, Father, especially in this, time, in this time that are maybe they can't take care of themselves, but just uh, we know that you will you will take care of them, Father, and we just pray that we would look for opportunities to help them because they're not only during this time, Father, but they've gone through times where they've been shut in and they can't go about and do the things that they used to do, and we just pray that you would be with each one of them and help us to, to, to look for opportunities there to, to help those, Father. We just pray, Father, we don't know what to pray for, really, that, that you just would please 
Help us to get through this situation, Father. Help, to, help us to get this thing behind us. And we just pray, Father, that we would always look for things to do and ways to live closer to thee, Father. We, we know that we do things that are not right in thy sight at time, from time to time, Father, and we just ask that you would please forgive us of this and help us to live our lives, Father, uh, in a way that we could live closer to thee each day and that uh, we would have a home in heaven one day, Father, and we pray all these th things through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. singing our God, he is alive. There is beyond the atom I'll be reading from Luke chapter 12, verses 4 through 7. Luke 12, 4 through 7. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he is killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? and not one of them is forgotten by before God. Well, even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are of more value than many sparrows. Thank you, Ben. Good morning. This morning, uh, and I'm going to make sure we get my PowerPoint going. All right, no problem, that's fine. Thank you for doing that, and uh, I want to apologize for any of you, uh, especially you, you guys up there, if I caused you any uh, discur uh, discur uh, concern. I can't talk this morning, Jordan. You might have to come preach. Uh, uh, any concern, uh, because I got up early this morning. I got up early. I prayed a little. I read a little. And then I, uh, um, make sure we work in here.
think I'm working. Okay. Um, but anyway, I prayed a little bit. Uh, did a little, back that screen up one. And then uh, I went in twice, Brandon. I said, Lisa, what time does it start? I just want to make sure because I just, 1030. Okay, I thought that was right, 1030. So then I went back and I read a little more and I went twice and I said, 1030, right? A second time. What time is it? Okay, I went back. And then the next thing I heard was, uh, hey, we're going to be late. So um, the one concern or the one challenge about having a one-track mind is keeping it on track, right? Uh, okay, so no problem with the, I'll just tell you all when to change that. This morning, as we think for just a little while, and thank you if you're listening from home, and thank you for being here, because my understanding is you're here because you love God. God is great, right? Now, when I say God is great, I want you to say all the time. And then when I say all the time, I want you to say God is great. And I want to make sure that the guys in the, up there doing the live stream are a little concerned about reverberation from how loud you say it. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. Now this morning, as we open our Bibles and we think about some things, I put that star field up there because we can't count the scar, stars. That's something that's infinite. That's something that is innumerable, uncountable, for us as we think about that. And so we kind of understand that power, that, that, that awesomeness as we think about that. And this morning, as I did a little final preparation, I looked up the word infinite just to make sure I had it right, without control, or without power, or, or without, sorry, bounds, without boundaries, without the ability to count or to see one end or the other. Okay, then I looked up the word finite. The finite means definitely has a boundary definitely has a place where it stops, where it runs out. Okay, now with all of that said, right now more than ever, now some of you who uh, are old enough to look back and see the, the uh, effects, uh, maybe you were children, but the effects of things that happened years ago during the Great Depression and uh, live close enough to it to see, none of us my age have any clue what that's all about. I remember a grandmother who would get upset if we threw a, a, a bread sack away because there might be something we could do with that later. Never understood that. Still don't understand that. But we are all understanding what the word finite means. I had all of these plans all the way to May, and now all of those don't seem to really matter. Uh, there are things that I got used to being able to do. I, I was, if I wanted to go to a ball game, buy a ticket to go to the tractor pool, which uh, my son and grandson were going to do, to go down and see that, to go down and, and, and watch a, 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 go to a con, any of those things I could do, but now all of a sudden I can't. Now all of a sudden, if you had told me six months ago that you could go into a Walmart and not find one roll of toilet paper, I'd have said, oh, come on. That's not, that's not going to happen here. But the other day, sure enough, and I have to confess, I almost had a bad thought if I hadn't already gotten what I needed. Um, I looked, and there wasn't a single roll on that. Not a one. Not one. Not even the cheap stuff. And then I saw a lady go by with someone or buggy. I thought, no. It's okay. Let it go. We're living in a time that suddenly everything is limited. And some of us have never been told no in our lives. And the idea of limitation scaring us to death. So I want us this morning for a little while to understand that according to Scripture, Hebrews 4 and verse 12 tells us that the Word of God is quick, it's living, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, and it is able to show us what we need to see. And so I hope we let God talk to us a little bit this morning and we understand that there are some things while we're living in a time that's limited, you know, I can't help but think about a verse in Psalm that says, teach me to be still and know that you are God. How many of us have ever tried to, to be still and, and focus on God, but we get our lives are so busy, it just keeps us from doing that. And I, I'm reminded, um, when my daughter was a teenager, she was into this movie called uh, High School Musical. And I'll be honest, I heard that played so many times from her room that I thought I would die if I heard it again. Uh, and there was a song in that high school musical called Status Quo. Uh, things just going on the way they always go on. And we're so used to that 
But then I'm also reminded of another commercial, which was a public service commercial about getting kids outside, getting them outside to exercise. And maybe you've seen that commercial. Nod your head just to let me know I'm not the only one who's seen it. But they were these kids all gathered in the den watching, playing video games. And mom came in and said, why don't you guys go outside? The you know, sun was bright. You could see it in the window. Go outside and get some, go outside and play. No, no, no. And then suddenly all the power went off. Everything black, dark. And one of them said, how about some hoops? Then they all went outside. They were playing, and mom used to the next, it switched scenes, and mom is standing by the breaker box to turn the power back on. And she said, it works every time. You know, someone asked me if I thought all of this pandemic, this fear, was a test. I'm not, I have a personal thought on that, but that's, I'm not going to share that. But I will tell you this, I believe this with all of my heart. It's easy to stop and be still and know that, and think about God when all the stuff that keeps us so distracted suddenly isn't there anymore. When everything stops, what are we thinking about? And there is a fear that I have that when all of this, when the dust settles on all of this, that there will be many of God's people who are not as strong because of this, but have been weakened because of this. But my prayer is that we'll be stronger. So I want us for a little while this morning to be stronger because we think about God's infinite things, just like those stars. So if you'll swap that, uh, the next slide and then go to the next slide. Some infinite things, things you cannot measure, things you cannot put your finger on as a human being that God gives us, has, was already giving us, gives us today and will give us tomorrow. And first of all, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8, go ahead and swap the screen. We're going to put that on the board for you. First of all, there are riches that are unsearchable, according to Ephesians 3 and verse 8. And I'll put it up there because I know there are people reading at home. But to me, who am less than the least of all saints, His grace, or this grace was given, that I should preach the un, to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Okay, stop just a minute. Paul said, I am grateful that I can go out there and preach the unsearchable riches of Christ. So if we are children of God, we are being preached to or we are gleaning from God's Word those unsearchable riches. Well, the word unsearchable, well, first of all, let's think about the word riches. Abundance, richness, I put this on purpose. I love this from the Greek dictionary, valuable bestowment. That's a little stiff, Jordan. Valuable bestowment. God has bestowed on me something valuable. There are riches. Now this word in the Greek language was used in everyday language to mean, Brandon, and by the way, I'm in teacher mode, so forgive me if I call somebody's name. I, I'm, I forget that. But, uh, and so Ben, you're a likely candidate here before this sermon's over. But uh, stacking things like my money or my goods or all of the things I can stack those up and stack them as high as I can see. But this word also had the idea of that valuable bestowment in a spiritual sense. Abundance, richness. The idea of unsearchable, past finding out. Past being comprehended. Can't count. I know that I'm a simple preacher and so I think in simple ways, but I used to love to watch DuckTales. With my children, no ducktails. Scrooge McDuck loved to swim around in that. I see some of you are. Ben's watched that, haven't you? They loved to swim around in that vault, up and in, out of all that gold. Had no idea how many gold coins were in there. Now, if you understand this word, God bestows upon us rich things, valuable things spiritually that we cannot count. And if we're not careful, we take them all for granted. We must not take those for granted. Number one, God has richly blessed us. He has given us things that we sometimes don't even recognize, and we take them for granted. But they are beyond countability or comprehension. Number two, God has not only given us love or um, joy, uh, Riches that are unsearchable, but joy that is unspeakable. Now, I love this one. The word joy, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, though you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy. 
Now watch it. With joy inexpressible and full of glory. Now watch. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And though you do not see Him, yet you believe. So, we love God with all of our heart. Matthew 22, 37. We do, don't we? We love Him. We haven't seen Him, but we believe on Him. Hebrews eleven six. 6. We believe. And all of that comes together. Now, if that comes together the way it's supposed to, That doesn't just move me to be here this morning. That doesn't just move me to turn on my television set and be a part of worship today. But it's more than that. And now more than ever, we need that. That joy he's talking about is the idea, now listen to it, that cheerfulness, delight, and great gladness.